welcome to the shop. We're here at Smoker Biller today and our task is making a collector for this 1,000 gallon offset smoker. So we're using quarter inch material today, just plate steel. And we have here a little cardboard assisted CAD here. We kind of laugh because it, it's true and it works and it's kind of easy for us. So we have half of our shape that we're after today and this is going to fit up nicely to our 1,000 gallon. Danny, give it a quick fit up on our 1,000 gallon here. That's it. So ultimately, we're going to have this manifold consume the space of the 1,000 gallon and we're going to cut and weld this right in place. Before we begin cutting on our, on our layout here and our pattern, uh, we're just kind of assessing our sheet and make sure that we get the most out of whatever we have on hand so we're not wasting any, any shapes within the, the initial piece we start with. Uh, this particular manifold is going to have a one piece that goes all the way around it. So it's a really long piece. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that we're not cutting into that piece at all and we're losing the opportunity to have that very, very long sliver piece that we need. Uh, so part of that is just getting this layout down and making sure it's gonna fit. So let's measure it up and see what we need. All right, so we're gonna need two times the, the area around this. So what I'll do is I'll roughly take measurements on my pattern and I'll go a little extra uh, just in case we have to trim it down or we need that extra amount uh, when it comes to fitting on this on the fit up. So what we'll do is get a rough idea. We got 10 inches here. I'm just going to pivot my tape on that point. We have 34 inches on this run. So now we're at 44 inches and we have a final of uh, another seven inches. So that brings us to 48. Yeah. So that times two, we're going to need a, a eight foot piece to go all the way around this manifold. So let's see what we got here. So we're sure we had 91 inches on this one. Is that math right? We're gonna do a speed double check. When I'm not on camera, this is pretty much how I'm measuring things at the house. Pivot. Again, a little extra room is gonna be good for us down the road. So we're, we're well within that. Looks like our math was off, but we have another maybe 11 inches here to spare. So I know that this manifold is gonna be 11 inches thick when we get done. So now we're gonna cut an 11 inch strip this whole way and bend that up and make this into a dimensional piece from this pattern. Let's begin. All right, which color do you want to use today? We got, <laughs> we got two choices. You, uh, you should really try this guy. We, we just got this in, we did a review on it, and it's it's been performing thus far. So what do you try. think? You want to give it a go? Yeah. All right, let's, let's just give it a go. We're going to try the best part. Oh yeah, well we oh. have a different drag tip. Well, this we? is a different one. Yeah, it's not a drag tip. This is a pilot arc cutter. Oh, that's right. So we have to change our offset. We do. We have the offset set up for our other style. Yeah, so these are the, the different types here. One has a guide on here, the wire. And obviously the offset from the center to this wire guide is going to be different than this, which has a tiered tip on here, a consumable. So usually we've been using the quarter inch and we index just off a tier of this consumable. But that's not the case with this. So what do you think we should do, Danny? Well, we're going to increase our offset. This one's going to be probably more like a half inch, maybe even a little bit more. I think we're there, Danny. Is it stable dragging it? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I like it, it. So our objective here is to get rid of the round factory edge off the sheet. So when we're making a 90 and open end corners, we have a definitive line to follow with our weld bead. If you leave that rounded corner on there, when you're in your hood and you're doing a long bead, you could lose the edge of your open weld and then you start wandering. So this is a, something to help us down the road three steps from now so we can make sure that we keep our, our same bead all the way down. All right, there we go.
All right, so we just plasma cut this little trimming off to get rid of the round part from the uh, steel mill. So now I'm going to chase this with a hard kick and just kind of get all the little uh, fragments off there from the plastic cut and have a nice smooth edge to weld to. When you're grinding the edge of this quarter inch, you have to have a lot of intent with this thing. It's moving metal, so if you angle it, you're gonna leave an angled edge. So we're trying to generate a sharp 90 degrees so we can weld and fill this in. So I'm gonna keep my grinder at a sharp 90 degrees the whole time. I don't wanna vary from that and, and put in a rolled edge on this top because we're just defeating the purpose of getting this nice and true again. Another tip is not to grind where you don't need to. When this gets all said and done, I could have a whole pattern of misguiding this grinder and there's no work to be done there. I'm just being sloppy. So try to be tidy when you're running this thing and think about what is this, what's gonna be shown ahead. You know, what are you about to leave behind? I wanna leave nothing behind. I wanna be clean and tight. Okay, so we're gonna take this back to my shop down the road and I have a press brake there and I know that my press brake is no bigger than 12 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this at 11 so we have some room on the die and uh, get it all bent up. So 11 inches is our new number. Okay, so we're cutting on this side of our, our cut because this is the piece we really, really want. So if we screw something up or the cut goes away, it's gonna be on our stock side and we're not worried about that right now. All right, so I'm gonna start this off with a plunge cut because dragging this for me personally is gonna give me the best line. Uh, Left-handed, maybe you're going this way, but for me in the scenario, I'm just gonna plunge. Uh, when this ends up in its final form, this plunge will not be a factor at all in our weld or our seam. So to plunge, I'm gonna come off angle, I'm gonna hit the, the plasma and I'm gonna walk it into my material and then begin my cut. Here we go. Well, I lied, I gotta plug this guy in. <laughs> Okay, so our plasma cut's complete. And during this cut, uh, there's a couple times where the plasma kind of had a hiccup. And when that happens, generally it's not totally all the way cut. And normally if I'm doing something small where it's just myself and I can manage the piece that I'm cutting, I will go back and make sure that that cut is all the way through. But because this is so long and we want to keep this piece and the stock piece parallel during our cut as much as possible. When those things happen, I'll let them go on a cut like this. Now that we're complete, we're gonna go back and address those little pieces, which didn't hurt us, it kinda of helped us to keep things aligned. All right, ready? Okay. There it is, let's put it right on top of here. All right, that wasn't too bad. So now you can see all the dross that we have left behind from our plasma cut on here. Uh, Sometimes you don't have to grind this off. It'll simply knock off with a little help from a, a hammer. This draw should come off pretty easily. It'll kind of clean some of that off of there. Uh, if you flip this back over, the grinding wheel will catch us on the bottom edge and sling all this off as well. If you notice when he was making the cuts earlier, he stopped and looked under the table to make sure that we weren't cutting into either the forks for the forklift or our steel saw horses. Yeah, done this, that a time or two. Yeah, this forklift has six foot extensions on the fork. Well, I guess it's a six foot fork. And uh, sometimes you lose track of how long that really is when you're sitting here cutting away. All right, so it looks pretty long, but I mean, if, by the time this thing makes its way all around our collector, we're going to eat up the majority of this piece of sheet we just cut. So we're going to have some extra on there, and this is where we can kind of play within that die. So what we'll do now is we'll find center, and we're going to start laying out all of these locations where the bend occurs. 
and we'll show you how that happens when we get to the next shop and the, and the press there. All right, let's cut out these four shapes. That'll be our next, next task. All right, well, let's clean up this edge we just made, and then we can use that for, uh, for one of the edges on this. on our intake manifold and we're getting ready to cut the top and the bottom of the intake manifold and then once those pieces are two pieces we're going to overlap them and clean them up together and make sure that they are mirrored images of each other so when we dimensionalize our piece it'll all make sense and things will be even values from left to right so the first step we're going to do is we're going to separate the two shapes and then independently cut them out again overlap them and clean up the edges all right, back to our plasma. I got my buddy Danny's here just out of camera frame here, but he's, he's hanging out with us today and, and helping us here at uh, Smoker Builder. side of the collector cut out and now we're going to kind of overlap them and clean up the edges and make these as mirrored as we can to each other. Uh, we cut everything out by hand so there's going to be some discrepancies with this and this is where you're kind of going back and cleaning up your mistakes and, and making everything just so. So what we're doing now is we're just kind of assessing what's fitting well and what isn't. Um, so to our naked eye this arch seems pretty close. And this is something that always gets tailored when this gets to fit on the tank because this portion here is going to be the end cap of that thousand gallon tank. So we'll have some massaging to do in this and some room to grind back to make that fit so. So right now we're going to line up our long pieces that match and shave down the ones that are a little over. Hey guys, Mr. Void here with Smoker Builder and uh, we've switched locations because we don't have some tooling at the one shop that we do at my personal shop. So. Welcome to my personal shop. Uh, it's kind of a wreck because I work out of here and there's uh, just me, so my messes are everywhere. So enjoy. So we're back on our collector and we're here because we have to bend the outside of this collector to dimensionalize it and make it 3D. And in order to do that, we're going to use my press brake and a die, which is just an action of going down and bending the metal in a fixture. So we'll show you that here in a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our one piece of quarter inch plate that we made really long and we're going to lay out where all these intersections are for these bends. And wherever there's an intersection, we're going to go ahead and put that in our press and make a bend there accordingly to match this angle. And eventually we'll, we'll make it all the way around and we'll have a dimensional piece. So if you can envision, we're going to have a big circle here for our stack collector. We'll have the same shape below. And right now, we're going to be making the piece that connects those two together. So this is going to be a three-piece box. Not like at KFC, though. All right, so first things first is we're going to find center. And then we have center on our shape. And then that's going to allow us to determine our two points of point of uh, break. All right. So looking at, our man looking at our manifold, from point to point is 14 inches. So now we got to find center split center and make 14 inch marks. Okay, Danny, I think we've got it all laid out and we're ready to move over and make that first bend. But before we do that, we need to know what degree this is. Or if you don't have something to tell you what degree it is, you can get a little protractor like this. It's just an adjustable angle finder, if you will. Kind of moves around, you can slide it. And this is a great tool to just grab a reference and take it over and match it up to what you just matched. So we're gonna, can you lock that angle down for me? So this is what we're trying to bend on this coming up. And Danny's measuring this to the outside of our shape, which means we're actually measuring to the inside of our outside skin. 
And those angles are, are different because you're, there's a quarter inch spacing between the two. One's here and the other's out. So we have to make sure that we're on the right side of the line when we break this. So as we bend, it's not growing further than our, our desired width. All right, so here's our angle. So something else I'll do, back to making notes and having reference, I'm just gonna trace this angle on here. So now when I'm over there, I can just reference and know that this angle is for the next corresponding bend. Okay, so that's nice and tight. All right, we're gonna move locations and set back up. We'll see you in a sec. All right, welcome back to the Smoker Builder channel. We just left off making the outside perimeter of our collector box, and now we've moved over to my shop press. Now this is just a real inexpensive, 12 ton shop press you get at your local big box stores nothing fancy and then we absolutely just modified it to make it uh, a tool so this is like a press uh, that has a, a die and uh, a fixture on the bottom to accommodate whatever shape you're doing so we're, we're making quarter inch pieces today and I just want to show an example before we get going on our large piece that's much bigger than this one of what we're up to so material goes in a die will come down via hydraulic press. It's going to get sandwiched between two beveled pieces of angle iron in turn, making us a nice angle, and it should have a nice smooth transition with a round radius on the die. So we'll just go ahead and apply some pressure. And here we go. Okay, my press is almost bottomed out and I have it set up to go just beyond 90 so I can get to 90 or just above that and bring it in or bring it out. So I have a little bit of extra room in there. So let's release this and see what angle we received. Okay, there's my 90 and it, it looks pretty close. I think it's off a little bit, but it looks dang close. So this is where you just get a square and you can come up here and reference and see how close you are to that 90. And it looks like I'm not quite there yet. I got a little bit more to go. So I would put this back in the press and go ahead and squeeze it a little bit more until this came down and then you got your angle. But we're not doing 90 today. We're doing less than 90. So this is the angle that we're trying to achieve. So we're not going to have to bend it as much to achieve this angle. And then this, if you recall, is the same angle that is on the front of our collector box. So without further ado, let's get started on the real thing. Okay, I think we're ready to go. This is 90 this way, and my edge is to the die this way. That means it's go time. Now we're gonna bend this till we achieve our correct angle. Tighten that up, and here we go. pretty close now this is under tension right now 12 tons of tension so when you get to that perfect angle and you release all that tension the metal is naturally going to spring out so we need to go not just to the angle that we're after but we need to go beyond that so when we do release this hydraulic it will spring back and be closer to the angle that we're trying to achieve Okay, so we're, we've achieved that, we're beyond that. So let's see how far this springs out and then uh, we may have to flip it over in the press and, and bring that out a little bit if it doesn't spring back. All right, so here we go. So here's what we just bent and now we're gonna reference our angle. And we are over. The angle is beyond where we want to go. Not by much, but enough to matter. All right, let's flip it over and take a little bit out of it. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna take a little bit out of this. Not think about it too much. What do you think? About that? Yeah. Oh man, I mean, that's pretty close. I think that's it. So there's a little bit of discrepancy there. 
But if we think back to the shape of that collector, we have a long measurement here before our next bend. And when you have that much leverage on something this heavy, you can go ahead and manipulate that a little bit. The nature of the shape is going to allow us to have a little bit of discrepancy with that. So I think we're fine to move on to the next one. We only have one more bend to do in this shape and then it's done. So we won't lose a whole lot if it's off. Okay, we can slide it your way. There you go. Starting to take shape. This is the best part. It's like a whole new thing just showing up in front of you. Okay, so we got our, you can see this thing is springy. So we have our two angles bent in this and now we're gonna take this back to our initial shape and we're gonna fit up these corners and we're gonna lay out the next transition for the angle. All right guys, well, we're back. We checked our first two bends and we got everything lined up. It's looking good. So now we're on to our second set of bends and this will be the final bend for our wraparound. And then we'll start fitting things up and tailoring it to the thousand gallon tank. So let's bend the next two. So here's our piece we just got done bending uh, there still has some play in here we've locked down all the angles and uh, now as we start fitting this we'll be able to pull this in and out and get all this open edge weld lined up but it's sitting pretty flat it's not teetering there's nothing crazy going on it looks looks pretty good right to left so real eager to get this fitted up and, and see how she does all right guys we're all squared away in my shop me and Dixie here are going to head back to Smoker Builder and tack this up and get it fit on our thousand gallon build. Come on back. Hey guys, all right, so it's time to fit this skin on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab our skins and kind of do an initial just stand up fit and see where we're at. Sometimes that'll reveal what problems you have ahead or sometimes it'll just let you know that it's ready to be fit and, and ready to be tailored. So let's go grab that skin and see where we laid. Okay, it's looking pretty close. So now I think I'm going to tackle it on some temporary um, material here just to kind of hold as a bottom. I'm going to sit this flat on my table and then I'm going to fit the top skin to that little tab I'm going to add on. And that will kind of keep things at the same plane that I want to end up at. At that point I'm just going to be bringing this in and out to line up our seams and tack well till we get to this end part. This is kind of forgiving with this size material and thickness so don't be too intimidated if it's not exactly uh, right where it needs to be. This is part of the fabrication process here to cut and make things fit and uh, kind of hide all the mistakes of either the process of the material or just maybe your own mistake on the, uh, on the tape measure. Either way, we're, uh, we're going to try to eliminate any kind of visual mistakes so everything looks nice and seamless when we get to the end. All right, I found some angle iron here by our chop saw, so I think this will do the job. These long runs will be nice to just line up on this edge here. Once we have our skin tack welded on, we'll be able to remove these with some uh, pliers or your crescent wrench to just kind of knock them free, and you'll still have some access to grind off those tacks before we begin on the other side. And you'll kind of repeat this process the same way. You just have to think about getting this removed once this is enclosed, you have to reach this piece uh, to get it out of there. If you indeed want to get it out of there. Some guys will leave that in there. Uh, we like to get that out. So down the road when this thing's functioning and it's time for a cleaning, you don't have any snags inside that will hurt your operator. So something to think about down the road. Always think about that as we're fabricating. You know, it's one thing to do our job here, but we're really handing this off to somebody to operate day in and day out. So all of those things will add up and and uh, either make a good experience for that person or kind of not so much catching them their fingers on sharp edges or running into extra stuff that shouldn't belong there. So as you build, just think about that because they're going to be looking at you as the builder at the end. 
All right, I got our skin here. It's all ground and clean, and now we can just set it right on our, our angle iron. It should just sit there for us. So I'm just kind of looking at, the, at this thing overall. We have a center mark here, so we're going to have to really lock that down because that will determine where these end up on the ends here. So once I get my center down, I'll just start looking at right to left and, and seeing where this needs to move. Again, we have some play in our side, so it just kind of be a dance here until everything kind of lines up and, and becomes square and looks good. It's really critical to take your time on these initial cuts because this is going to reflect how you did. This is your real-time report card here. If you did a good job, great. If not, it's going to tell you right away and then you're going to have to address whatever's going on. So we're fitting up our side here and uh, like we just talked about that bow earlier and uh, that's just kind of arching on the edge line here. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a clamp. We got a really stout tabletop here that kind of withstands some pressure. So we're going to go ahead and clamp this up. We have an inch and a half thick table. So I'm just going to clamp this up with a pipe clamp and put a little pressure. And it's going to take some of that bow out of here and close up our gap. And we put that angle in here earlier, so all we're going to do is clamp this down until it touches our angle iron. So there's really nothing to think about. You know exactly where that plane is and it's going to put you right at the perfect spot. So I'm keeping my tacks off of my transition area because I want to have a really nice weld when I get to that part. This needs to be fit out some more. Uh, but we have room to do so because this is just on a bend. We can manipulate that bend and bring it out to where we want to be. Now I'm chasing our pattern on top because I know this is parallel with the other side because I, upon layout we made it so. So rather than fitting to our side skin, we're going to fit to our pattern and let the side skin match the top skin. All right, so you're going to be moving this thing around several times on your table and it's important to, again, think about what's going on ahead. If I lay this flat on the table and I just start manipulating and dragging this thing around, I'm going to leave road rash on my brand new smoker I'm trying to sell. So be mindful of what's going on as you're moving material around because you're really just showing, you know, what this thing went through to become what it is. So I'm staying on the edge where a weld will live eventually and no one will know the difference. So I can drag on here and it'll just be on the weld seam. You'll never see a scratch. Okay, we're fall flipped over and we're trying to do the other side. And I, we got to pull out that angle iron we put in earlier and we're going to use it in the same fashion to do the top side. That's just going to establish our, our edge here. So we just got them tack welded in. Hopefully they're not uh, too crazy to get out of here. There it is. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna clean these up. We'll get them tacked on the top and start again. All right, ready for some skin. Now, uh, I'm gonna move this into position before I put the top skin on. Uh, just like the bottom, I'm probably gonna use a clamp and if I'm inbound on my table edge, it's not gonna be feasible. So I'm gonna scoop this into place before I get the skin on here, just in case. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start off with this back edge. It's kind of starting the whole plan here. And when I think this looks good, I'll just give it a tack and I'll start looking at this end here and looking at my ne next transition. Uh, sometimes if you get overzealous and you just tack something up because it looks good here, it could be really off here and you should have compromised. So maybe just do one or two tacks and then start evaluating what's coming up because you could paint yourself in the corner really quick if you just assume that these are going to line right up. They often don't. You know, other, other parts that you be manufacturing are going to have a lot tighter tolerances. Um, we kind of, you know, we're just here for function and form. If it's the right size and it miters up and welds up, we're probably going to be okay. So there's not a lot of pressure to, to absolutely nail this. But it is your signature. With this leaves, you're the one that touched it last. So I like to take my time and, and do the best job I can. All right, so we're still fitting up this collector box here. And now we got to 
get this blade lined up with our top skin. Uh, it's kind of inbound too far, so we need to push it out. And normally we get a port of power and put it in here. A port of power is just kind of like a hydraulic jack, but it's just loose. It doesn't have a frame. It just has some components that you can put on or extend. And it put it in place and it has a little hand pump and it'll push us out. But we have that at our other shop. We don't have that today. So we're kind of looking around the shop trying to find an alternative. And one thing we have laying around here are these pipe stands. So our friend Bob Moffitt made these for us when he was back in uh, visiting a couple years ago. And uh, it's a great little stand. It has an adjustable threaded bolt on the top. You can adjust how far up or down it goes. Now this is rated for a bolt, so you got to be careful how much weight you put on here. But this is a great universal stand. So we're going to get it in here and try to see if it has enough power to, to push this out. Okay, I have two of its feet planted flat on our skin, and I have the top B evenly distributed on our skin too. So I'm going to just hit this crank and uh, push it out a little bit, see if it'll go. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm looking down this edge right here. So this is our open weld. And there's two equal values of steel. We're just trying to line those up so they all look nice and even and they have a nice 90 on there. That looks good, but it's still kind of tall for me. So we're gonna have to squish it down this way. So now we're just gonna close this gap here. I'm just eyeballing it here and that that looks good. It's right on the edge of our of our top or our side plate here and it's looking good. Let's tap. All right, that did it. Well, this thing's getting heavy. Any heavier, I'm going to get somebody to help me move this thing. We're going to tackle the opposite side of the edge we just did and take care of that whole side. All right, so now we're to the point where we have our sides fit up and it's time to weld this. But before we get to welding on this thing, we wanna reassure that this thing doesn't take a new shape with all the heat and the, everything expanding and contracting with all the heat. So what I'll do is I'll tack in a stiffener between these two and that'll just keep things at bay and uh, I'll keep that there all the way to the point where it's welded in and installed and then I'll go ahead and remove that from inside of the tank. And we just do that to keep things at, at bay. So we have some two by two with eighth wall tubing kind of laying around. And I'm just gonna make a mark, get this cut and tack it in. All right, we'll head to our chop saw and get this cut. All right, this is the favorite part of my day. This is where I get to put all the welder, welder cologne on with the chop saw. <laughs> support tacked in and now we're ready to weld the perimeter on both top and bottom. So my method on this is to keep things kind of in place I will start from the center and I'll start working my way out to the edge and make my way all the way around and not only will I work from the center to the out but I'll flip flop from top side to bottom side and just slowly put my welds all the way till I reach the very end. This will keep things kind of lined up and won't move as much on you. Okay, so we're getting ready to weld and I have one little spot here that's high so I'm going to take the time and grind that down so I have an even quarter inch reveal evenly throughout. And this is going to help me when I'm welding. I won't have to compensate for extra material. It'll just be the same.
fluided and now our next step is to take this over to our tank. We're going to find out where our cooking grate height is. We'll take how tall this is and split that up and then we're going to start laying out our lines to start our cut. It'll probably be undersized so we can slowly get this thing to fit. Uh, but stay tuned because all that's coming up right next. Hey guys, before I forget, we are making plans for this entire build. So if you like what we're doing or you have questions about building your own, well come to smokerplans.net and get your own set of plans. We have over 240 different smokers on there that you can choose and browse through and, or get this one to follow along as we build. All right, thanks guys. Till next time, we'll see you later.